Hi everyone, I'm Alex Student. I'm a developer advocate here at Dagster Labs. And today we're doing our first video in our series around Dagster best practices, where we share tips and tricks to help you get started and ship more confidently with Dagster. Now make sure you like this video and subscribe so you don't miss any Dagster updates. So Dagster is a flexible framework and you can do pretty much anything data related with it. And with that flexibility, it can be tough to know what are the best practices around like how you structure your project for your specific use case. Now, how you set up your project and leverage your asset metadata creates a strong foundation for you to build your data platform and makes it easier to take advantage of the more advanced features in Dagster, such as alerts, declarative automation, and freshness checks. In my role as a developer advocate, I have the advantage of seeing how people across the world use Dagster. Today, I will discuss a few common Dagster project patterns that you can use to get started to build your data platform. As a rule of thumb, you want your project structure and asset metadata to align to how your organization talks about data. If you use a medallion architecture and talk in terms of data marts, then your assets should reflect that. And if your stakeholders are more technical and often talk around the data tools and integrations that you're using, then your project structure should reflect that. This is important because as we know, data is more of a human domain and less of a technical one. And if everybody's on the same page, it improves new engineering onboarding, developer experience, and data literacy and communication across your organization. Initially, when you start with Dagster, you'll have an empty project like so. And, and right now we're looking at the new DG project structure, but the same principles apply if you're using an older version of Dagster. And whenever I start a new project, I always start with one definitions file. And once I get to about 300 or 400 lines, I then separate the different Dagster abstractions into their own files like assets, schedules, and resources. And then as I add new stages, like if I have an ingestion and a transformation group, I'll add a new folder with the different abstractions as files within those folders. So here we're looking at the Huli environment and the code for this project will be in the description. And as you can see here, all the assets are grouped by what the function is. So we have our raw data, our cleaned and our analytical data, as well as our BI, ML, and forecasting and marketing groups here. And this is a really common architecture type if you're using a medallion architecture with data marts at the end. And it's really helpful if your team is less technical and they don't necessarily care about the upstream processes and they're more focused on their data marts or their BI reporting or forecasting tools. And the advantage of this is you will talk about your assets and how they're grouped together in the same context that your stakeholders do. And that allows them to understand how everything is related without them having to be data engineers themselves. And here at Daxter, our project is grouped by tool. And our conversations around our data and data engineering needs usually revolve around the use case or a tool. So our project structure reflects that. And the code is available if you want to take a look for yourself. The link will be in the description. We also utilize a mono repo here at Daxter for our internal implementation. And I know mono repos can be a controversial subject in some circles, and it really allows you to simplify the complexity in managing some of these larger scale projects by having all of your Dagster code in one place, all of your, your DBT project in the same repo. And you can have your tests, CI, CD, and environment setup logic all in one place. Uh, this minimizes the amount of errors you run into and has like a self-documenting function to it. And when it comes to code locations, usually one code location is fine for your starting out. But if you have multiple teams that have their own workflows or you have teams that have different conflicting dependencies, then splitting out into separate code locations is your best bet. If you're using Dagster Plus, you can utilize the DagsterCloud.yaml file to configure the code locations. And if you're running Dagster OSS or locally, workspace.yaml file is how you configure your code location. And then if you have integrations with the DBT project, I would also recommend keeping that within the same repo. And like we have here, we have our DBT project right next to our Dagster project. So everything is all in the same place and it's easy to reference the two. And again, to reiterate my original point, whenever you're thinking about your project structure, it's really important to understand how your organization works and talks about data and to have your project structure mirror that. So there's no miscommunications and it's easier for people to hop in, contribute and understand your data platform. Thank you.